Hey, what's up, ladies? This is Alex from Mindful Attraction 2.0. And in today's video, I'm, we're going to be talking about five signs that you haven't healed yet. This is more about if you've been out of a relationship or you've been hurt, you've been, um, you've been neglected at one point or another in your life. If you see these signs in you, it means that you still haven't gotten over them, right? We we've all gotten over our exes, but that doesn't that doesn't mean that they didn't leave an imprint in our minds and heart that affects us until today. You see, we all have relationships. Actually, not me to be honest with you, but most people have relationships that where they gotten over that ex, but as a result, they developed certain belief systems about men that cause that self sabotages them in future relationships. You can't help it, unfortunately, but. You can't help it because it's unconscious, but now I want you to become aware of these things in you. The first step is awareness, not fixing it. Awareness. All right. So I want you to become aware of these traits in you. And if you do have these traits, then wait for the next video because we have something because me and you, we can have to have a little power. All right. Me and you can have to have a little power. All right. So the first one, you have negative emotions towards your ex. That's the first one, right? Um, I'm not talking about feelings, feeling emotion for your ex, but rather I'm talking about feelings of hostility and anger. Um, these feelings come as a result of feeling that you, like you can't control your life and other people are responsible for where you are in your current life. This, these emotions come from feeling of, of helplessness and thinking that there is permanence in the world, all right? And that causes you to believe that what you see is what you'll continue to get. So you get resentful because you're saying it's not me, it's just how things are. I was born into the situation. This is the victim mentality that one develops when they put all of their faith in someone else and not in themselves. A lot of people think that hating their ex is okay, but it isn't. Um, that hatred is a reflection of one's emotions towards themselves. Being over someone is uh, is all about forgiving and having compassion for the other person. In, in in the state of compassion, there's no room for hate and creates the necessary room to heal. You see, so if you feel those negative emotions towards your ex, then you just you, I want you to begin seeing them as a child who was hurt. You feel more compassionate. Boom, that emotion. I want you to continue med to meditate onto that. Like literally take five minutes a day and just imagine as though that's the case. You're going to begin to condition your mind to feel that way towards your ex and that allows you to heal. Kind of crazy. Um, number two, um, you have a higher need for control. Uh, when one when one feels hurt or like the victim in their life, in order to avoid additional pain, you begin to feel that you begin to feel the need to control your life more than before. You also resist anything that doesn't confirm to your strict expectations. Have you like have you ever encountered people who just need to be who need to have who need things to be their way or the highway? Those people who are unbearable to work with or be around. Why? Because they aren't flexible and there is no compromising with them. You must do things their way or they'll cause havoc. You see, in a relationship, if this becomes your defensive mechanism for pain, then you encounter men who are always in a state of defensiveness because you 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 yourself are defensive. Because you're always trying to control everything how they are. Right? For example, my aunt, right? She's cool. I'm not talking shit on you, aunt. You know? Tia. Te amo, tia. <laughs> right? <laughs> She'd be like, Ese muchacha porra está en ese YouTube y hablando de mí. Mira, habla con tu, habla con tu hijo. Ese malcriado. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, so my aunt, she always needed to control everything. Like, um, like when I would, um, when I would make make ramen, you know, ramen soup. She'd be like, "Do it like this." I'm like, "What?" I'm like, "Aunt, I know how to make ramen." She'd be like, "No, put it, put it halfway, put it halfway the fire, put it halfway." I'm like, "My bitch, what you talking about, man? I'm putting it hot. I don't want to wait." No, put it this way. She will always ask me for that. It's because she always had the need to control, right? And so that comes when you're always defensive because you feel like if you don't, if things aren't this way, you'll feel emotionally unbalanced. So it's kind of like a, it's, it's kind of like playing that bajangles, like slowly putting everything up. It has to be perfect because if something's off, the whole shit will collapse. The third one, you are more defensive. Not healing, um, not healing means being in pain. You see, being in pain means trying to avoid feeling more pain. Um, which means you see the threat of pain at every corner. You then gear up with your mental armor and attempt to control your life so, so to avoid the pain that traumatized you in the past. Um, number four, there is, not, there is not acceptance behind your longing for them, right? Um, there's nothing wrong with having feelings for someone. The problem arises when you resist the fact that you're still not over them. Don't lie to yourself. Be honest. Clearly what's inside you and accept it. 
Um, don't try to say, oh, I'm over them, right? Don't try to do that. You want to be honest with yourself. If you haven't gotten over them, it's okay. You see, you want to face that because it's, sh- it's kind of shameful to still like someone, you know? So it's important to face that face to face so that you're able to face your shame. You're able to face the, 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 the parts of you that you find negative and just be there because you haven't done that. So you want to do the opposite sometimes. When you haven't gotten a result, you want to do the opposite and see what happens. Um, so if you're still if you're still lying and acting like you haven't gotten over them, but deep down there's pain, deep down you long for them, the last thing you want to do is lie to yourself because then that stunts your growth as an individual. Right? Um, number five, you still wake up in disbelief. Right? And this is another sign that you still haven't healed. Um if it's been months after the relationship ended and you still wake up in disbelief, it means that you're still having a tough time moving on. You haven't accepted it. Nothing's, nothing's wrong with that, but you must face reality and accept that it's fucking over. You have to do that, right? The feeling of disbelief is an underlying resistance to reality. This will cause you to be stunted in, in the past and unable to move on into the future. If you believe that you haven't healed from your past relationship, then the best thing to the, then it's the it's best to use that pain to grow. You see, practice mindfulness and use your pain as a spiritual practice. This will help you grow from your experiences. And I'm in the next video. I'm going to talk about that, how to do that, right? But that's the first step: is noticing what's going on, noticing that you still haven't grown, noticing that you're still looking for the same guy, looking for um, like that you're still looking for the kind of guy that broke your heart, trying to rede- redeem yourself. Trying to find a guy that reflects the other guy so that hopefully you could you could like mentally masturbate into redeeming your self esteem by saying, Oh, you know, he kinda really looks like my ex, you know. So if he likes me, I mean, you know, I'm good now, you know. That trying to using that as a way to feel better is not gonna work. Because those things will always disappoint you. What you have to do is go in yourself is is and face whatever that is that you don't want to face. Anyways, take care and have a good day. Bye-bye. All right, ladies and gentlemen, if you guys ever want to learn how to use your feminine energy to influence people, learn how to use your masculine energy to become more assertive, and also learn how to blend both energies to improve your dating life, your spiritual life, honestly, um, your relationship life, your family life, your career life, this is the course for you. If I had to make a course for my nieces, I have two nieces. One is 8, 19, and one is 14, 15. 16. Holy shit. Oh my god, he's a bad fucking uncle. He's a, he's a bad uncle. Get him. Shut up, Melissa. You should, you should get this course, right? And this is the course that I will make for them. So, for example, watch the curriculum, right? In the first week, we're going to be showing you how to establish a strong masculine foundation without letting it hurt your feminine energy. This masculine foundation is a source of who you are, right? It's it's your bodyguard. Without this, your whatever feminine energy you create will be destroyed by the outside because your your fem your masculine is your shield. So we'll talk about goal setting. We'll talk about how to develop a serious attitude. We're gonna be talking about how to um, how to use more logic, how to use more goal oriented behavior. It's more how to be a man, <laughs> you know. It, you know. Now the next one is how to embrace the feminine energy, right? This one would this one will teach you about how to minimize excessive masculine traits, developing self awareness. Healing abundant feminine energy, regulating your emotion, vo- uh, mastering voice qualities and, ex- and facial expressions, surrendering control and allowing pain to be felt. This is honestly, it's, it's, it, it, this will supercharge, like, like, like Kayo Ken, your masculine energy. After that, we have um, femininity in the workplace and how to be feminine in the workplace without letting people take advantage of you and the nuances of um, how women of power should behave versus women who are subordinates in the workplace. And even the dress code, they, they, these are, this is based on psychology, people. It's kind of insane. I'm actually excited about this one. The next week, we talk about navigating the labyrinth of male and female friendship. And this, a lot of women find confusing, so we talk about that. And how to identify envious friends, how to identify the good friends, how to keep male friends, and how to keep female friends. Week five, we talk about how to release the burden of the past and stop dest- and destroy mental projections. This is actually really powerful. Um, and this, and then week six, we talk about how to increase your observational power so that you so that you can read people better. 
Um, and we have a bunch of bonuses. It, the course starts at um, nine at ninety nine dollars, um, and you guys can pre order the course today at sixty nine dollars before it goes out. Um, if you're watching this, most likely I'm in the meditation retreat, so I really, most likely I will be praying for all of you guys. And um, just click on the description down below of the video right there. You'll see it, and you can pre order that course. It's gonna be out by by the end of next month or the beginning of February of, of March. One of the two people, because I have a 10-day retreat to do. And I want to I want to finish the course um, after the retreat, because I think the, the ideas are going to be so much better. All right, man, I'll see you guys later. Free order, man. Oh, I'm closing the channel.